Hello and welcome to this tutorial on EIGRP, the Enhanced Interior Gateway Routing Protocol. This is part one where we're going to cover all of the basic characteristics of this routing protocol and then we'll take a look at how neighbors are formed and how they exchange information. So to start off, this is a Cisco proprietary protocol. So it's not exactly as popular or at least as widespread as OSPF, which is an open standard. So we can only run this on Cisco hardware. EIGRP is classless, so we get all of the great benefits because it supports variable length subnet masking and CIDR. Now EIGRP is not a distance vector routing protocol and it's not a link state routing protocol. It's sometimes referred to as a hybrid routing protocol and what they mean by that is it kind of embraces some of the characteristics of each of those. So it's a little bit distance vector and it's a little bit link state. EIGRP supports IP version 4 and 6 and when we take a look at the metrics of EIGRP which we have a dedicated tutorial on you're going to see that they are a bit more detailed and complicated than OSPF. And then finally to round out the overall characteristics EIGRP is a relatively low uh, resource requirement routing protocol. In other words it's not going to eat up uh, a lot of CPU and memory and in terms of bandwidth, it doesn't necessarily need a lot of bandwidth either. Now, just like OSPF, EIGRP uses the whole neighbor concept in order to operate. And it works in a very similar fashion. A router will send out a hello message to the multicast IP address of 224.0.0.10. Keep in mind that's a different address than what OSPF uses. But basically each router doesn't know where its neighbors are. So it sends out the, the hello message and it waits for a reply. So this is a dynamic discovery process, just like OSPF. Once another router running EIGRP is discovered, there are a few requirements that have to be met before they can become actual EIGRP neighbors. So there's some verification that happens and there are three requirements. The first one is the two routers have to be in the same IP subnet. The second requirement is they have to have the same AS number configured. Now AS number stands for autonomous system number and this really identifies a group of routers running EIGRP. And so in order for two routers to not only become neighbors but then to share information, they have to have the same AS number configured in EIGRP. So it's kind of an identification of sorts for a group of routers. This is somewhat similar to OSPF's approach to organizing a network using the area. Okay, so the same AS number has to be configured. The third requirement is if two routers are using authentication, they have to be able to authenticate with each other. So the same passwords have to be configured on both routers. Those are the three requirements. If those three requirements are met, then the two routers become EIGRP neighbors. So the overall process to become a neighbor is pretty straightforward. First you have to discover your neighbors and then you verify that you actually can become neighbors and then that's it. Then you're a neighbor. After that you're free to start exchanging network information with that other router. So you can see this is a much simpler process than the one we covered in OSPF. We don't have all of the different states of becoming a neighbor. You don't have to worry about any of that stuff. EIGRP is rather simple when it, com when it comes to forming neighbors. We kind of like this. Now once you do become a neighbor, this information about neighbors is stored in, a, in what is called a neighbors table. And so inside this table, we hold some what you would call state information on each router. Is it up? Is it down? Is it available or not? Uh, you'll have some information on the IP address of that router, what interface to use in order to connect to it. Basics about the neighbor are going to be stored in the neighbor table. And then once you become neighbors, you have to maintain your neighborship. What I mean is we have to go ahead and make sure that the neighbor is still there and make sure that they know that we are still alive. And so the same thing we talked about OSPF is actually present in EIGRP. And that is the hello timer, the hello messages. They're sent periodically and the hello timer dictates how often they're sent. And just like OSPF had the dead interval, the time you had to wait in order to hear a hello message before you declare a neighbor as being down, 
Well, EIGRP has one as well. It's just referred to as the hello timer, and it's the same thing. It dictates how long you wait in order to hear a hello message before you declare that neighbor as being down. Okay, now that we actually have neighbors, let's talk about what they do, and that is exchanging route information. So when neighbors, when routers first become neighbors, they exchange their entire routing table. And they only do that once. So when routers A and B, when they initially become EIGRP neighbors, they exchange everything they know about. After that, only changes to the route tables will be exchanged. So if the link between B and C would were to fail, router B would then send an update to router A, and it would only have to deal with this particular change. It would not be the entire table. So it sends partial updates, just like OSPF would, and yet it sends the entire route table in the very beginning, just like a distance vector would. Now all of this information is stored in a topology table similar to OSPF, however EIGRP doesn't hold as much detailed information like OSPF does, so the contents are, are not as complicated. Now it does use this topology table to then go ahead and create routes, just like OSPF would. The actual details of that process, however, are different. Again, we'll cover the details of creating routes in a dedicated tutorial. Now the last thing to cover here regarding exchanging routing information is how it's done. With EIGRP, it uses a protocol in order to help it exchange topology information. And this protocol is referred to as RTP, or Reliable Transport Protocol. And so whenever an EIGRP neighbor sends information, routing updates, to its neighbors, it uses RTP. Keep in mind there's another RTP out there, Real-Time Transport Protocol. That's different. They, they share the same acronym, but these are two different protocols, so don't be confused when you see the two acronyms in different contexts. And so basically, update messages, in other words, when a change happens on the network, are sent to either the multicast IP address or to a specific router. So EIGRP has a flexibility of updating everybody or just a single router. And by using RTP, it helps the routers avoid any lost updates. In other words, if there's any packet loss in the network, a router would not receive an update. And if any of the updates come, but they're out of order, it helps the router sequence that information so that it can then put it all back together and, and make some meaning of it. So uh, even though they did arrive, they're out of order, that information is not lost. It's still meaningful. Okay, let's summarize what we covered. We began with the characteristics and features of EIGRP, like it's Cisco proprietary, supports IP version 4 and 6, is considered to be a hybrid routing protocol because it's a little bit of link state and a little bit of distance vector, supports variable length subnet masking and CIDR. And then we talked a little bit about how neighbors are formed and how a hello message can be sent to the IP multicast address of 224.0.0.10 Make sure you commit this IP address to memory as well as OSPF's multicast IP. And we now know that neighbors are formed only after the three requirements are met. Namely that they are in the same IP subnet, that they're in the same AS number, and if they're using authentication, they can actually pass authentication. EIGRP uses the hello and hold timers in a similar fashion to OSPF in order to maintain neighbors. And EIGRP will either send a full routing update or a partial update. The full is when the neighbors first come up, and thereafter it's just partial updates. And then finally, we took a look at the reliable transport protocol, which is used in order to help EIGRP uh, reliably deliver routing updates to its neighbors. Okay, so that is the EIGRP introduction and cover of Neighbors. Be sure to check out the next video in the series on EIGRP to learn how routes are calculated. Okay, thanks for watching.